Uh, let's let's start with just a little backstory. Uh, Brooklyn, where we're standing right now, we're on the eastern tip of Long Island. So when people talk about here, oh, I'm going to Long Island, it's difficult to go to Long Island. We're already on Long Island. So, so the original Europeans to this area who came in the uh, eight, uh, 16th, uh, 40s were the Dutch and the Belgians, and Brooklyn developed into a series of six towns. What today is the County of Kings was originally six towns or townships. The words are interchangeable. Bushwick, Brooklyn, Flatbush, Flatlands, New Utrecht, and the <coughs> English-speaking Gravesend. 1834, New York City becomes a city for the first time. The, that's the first charter of the city of Brooklyn. Uh, it becomes a city for the second time in 1855. Anyone here from Williamsburg, Brooklyn? Anyone here from Williamsburg? Williamsburg, which we now think of as part of Brooklyn, was a separate city. Just the way Greenpoint was a separate city that was annexed by Williamsburg. So it became Williamsburg Greenpoint. But then in 1855, the city of Brooklyn annexed the city of Williamsburg. So that's how all these areas became uh, larger. And then ultimately, what happens in 1898? Incorporation of the city of New York. Right, the year of the, the great mistake. The, state, yes. <laughs> the incorporation. Brooklyn gives up its cityhood to become one of the five boroughs. So you have Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, uh, the Bronx, and Staten Island, too. Oh, oh. So uh, this park that we're standing on, the Fort Green Park, was originally a fort. It was Fort Putnam during the American Revolution. And it was part of a series of forts on this part of Brooklyn that were quickly erected beginning in March 1776 to hopefully kept the British out. Okay, so the British are in charge of the city of, well, it's not even the city yet, in charge of Brooklyn and the city of, of New York, which is basically the lower part of Manhattan. That's where the population is centered. Uh, there were allegiance oaths. So if you wouldn't take the oath of allegiance to good old King George, you, you were arrested. Now, already, remember, they had already arrested people in battle from the Battle of Brooklyn. They quickly ran out of lands, land jails, so they brought into Wallabout Bay. Think about where the present-day Brooklyn Navy Yard is. The Navy Yard is landfill. That's where Wallabout Bay is here. This is kind of an old map. See, this, this is called the Wallabout here. Here's Washington Park. We'll discuss that. Okay, and that's that. So very close to here. They uh, brought in these, I forget, it was 12 or 16 old hulks of rotting British warships. And they crammed these people that wouldn't take the oath of, of allegiance to King George. And they were not only now, quote, unquote, Americans, whatever that meant in 1776, there were other people from all around the world who had come to help the Americans fight for independence. Uh, they died on the ships of overcrowding, of starvation, of disease, and ultimately by the end of the war, almost 12, it's estimated that about 12,000 people died on the ships, 12,000. Uh, in the battles of the American Revolution, not even 6,000 Americans died in battle, under 6,000, but yet about 12,000 died on the ships. The Americans hated the British for, for, the, for, for the treatment. Now, to make matters worse, when the bodies every morning were passed out to the top of the ship, the British just uh, buried them in very shallow graves here in the Wallabout Sands, all around here. So for decades, the bones washed up. From, from the shores. And finally, in 1808, 1808 uh, uh, Benjamin Romain, uh, who had knew some survivors from the ships, he gathered the bones that he could, and he himself started a, a memorial, a monument to them, which, which opened in 1808 directly to the west of the Navy Yard. The city park, we need a park. During the Revolutionary War, People wanted to basically level this off as much as possible, put the grid in, and, and develop it. The, and Whitman said, we can't do that. 
one, we need a park, let's put the park there, and two, this is sacred ground. This was one of the forts that was built to protect Brooklyn during the, uh, the American Revolution. People lost their lives here. Uh, Washington retreated from this fort. He went to Brooklyn Heights from here. He went to Manhattan. It has history, let's save it. And finally, in 1847, the New York State Legislature said, yes, we are going to allot funds. We're gonna give permission for uh, a building of Washington Park on Fort Greene. The man who built, who was the engineer for Fort Putnam in the Revolution, was Nathaniel Greene, just like the street over here. So when it came to the War of 1812, the park was made. Putnam um, was a general from the American Revolution. I guess they wanted to honor uh, General Green, who was the engineer. So the name is uh, from the Revolution. This is a monument that went up in 1908, the Prison Ship Martyrs Monument. They're also known as the Wallabout Martyrs, right? Wallabout being the bay in which the ships went. Now it was, all, and uh, it's landfill, and now part of Brooklyn Navy. Okay, so just remember this: the Prison Ship Martyrs Monument, 1776. So that's when the uh, prison ships were started to be filled up. 1908 is the monument. Uh, President-elect Taft uh, dedicated the monument in November of 1908. Uh, there's a huge flag on it that, that fell to the ground at the moment it was dedicated. And his pictures of it. So we're now going to hear Walt Whitman's poem, The Wallabout Martyrs, as set to music by Gilda Lyons. In Brooklyn, in an old vault, marked by no special recognition, I huddled at this moment the undoubtedly authentic remains of the Sanchez revolutionary patriots of the British prison ships of 1776 Originally buried, many thousands of them in trenches in the one about There, there's two things. There used to be an, when it opened in 1908. There used to be a little lift. Otis lift elevator, and there was a double helix stairway. None of that exists now. None of that exists. Uh, today, you can get to the top. If you're will one, you have to get permission. Uh, two, you have to be really strong and brave. It's a hand over hand ladder to put here. So this monument, 1908, when you enter in here, there is a small crypt. It, it's uh, Guastavino tiles. You know, if you go to uh, Grand Central Station, the Oyster Bar, that's Guasto Vino tiling. It's, it's self-supporting tiling that interlocks. It's actually a beautiful room. There are 15 slate coffins, and mo most of them, almost all of them, have just bones that have been collected since 1808, which people feel are, are relics, remnants of the Wallabout martyrs. There is one complete skeleton, that's Mr. Romain, who did the original monument in 1808. There are a few steps down, it goes in, and then on each side, there's like spaces for the coffins. So the whole space is it's not, it's not very large. It's not bones by a Excuse me? Bones. No, no, it's not bones. The, bone, the bones are encased in, in these deteriorating coffin-like structures. Anything strike you?